Hello guys, thank you for joining this webinar. In this webinar, Ihor is going to walk you through a demo on how to organize and structure Jira issues content using tables. He'll provide a couple of simple use cases to show you exactly how it is done and why tables can save a lot of time helping you organize everything in your Jira. Before Ihor joins this webinar, I want to let you know that you can ask any questions you have in the chat tool on the right side of the screen. We'll do our best to answer any questions you might have, but if you are not able to answer the questions straight away, we'll make sure to get back to you shortly. So that's it. Enjoy this webinar and I'll see you in the chat. Welcome everybody, I'm Igor. I'm the lead of the team that's responsible for Table Grid Next Generation product at Idalka company. And I'm here to show you how to organize and structure your Jira issue content just using tables. Let's start from a simple use case. For example, you're managing a system administration team and some of your customers sent you an email that looks like this. Hi Igor, based on the fact that the amount of our Jira users is growing too fast, we need to migrate our Jira to the new server ASAP. Is this something that the Edalco team can help with? This is urgent. Yeah, it's not the email everybody likes to get, but we still need to solve the problem. And of course, we start with creating an issue. You go to your Jira, you create a ticket to install new environment for your customer, and the task is pretty general. For the type of work, it's almost required to have a list of small tasks that visualize the process. It might be a sort of checklist that describes the typical things you do every time. So you just paste it into the description, then mark down the work you've done. And this might be enough if you work just by yourself, but we usually work in teams. So what if you have to distribute this work between your team members? You can start mentioning them in the description section, but moreover, you want to track the progress of their work uh, well, they can manually type the status uh, next to their names, uh, then you will see what's going on, but I don't think anybody wants to have that mess. So, in the Jira there is a solution for such situation, it's called subtask. Basically, you can create a task for every piece of work, describe, assign, see the workflow, but it takes a lot of time, doesn't it? And it also generates a lot of content in your Jira, a new issue for everything, then to work with it, you need to go inside, change it, then go back every time. And it also a lot of configuration behind this. What if I want to have it all inside my one main issue, keep it simple, manage everything in line, create those tasks together with the main issue. So yeah, it's all about the table grid. I've created a simple grid that mirrors the subtask functionality. It has summary column, status, and assignee to select users. You can add new tasks just with one click, everything on the same screen, and very convenient to use. After the issue was created, you can directly go to your table and do anything right there, change the status, assign to other people, or add more tasks. You can actually collect a lot of information here, that's why we added some helping functions like sorting or filtering. You can filter out the rows that only contain status working or to see what's doing some particular user. For numeric values, you can use some advanced options like greater than or lower than and so on. There is also a capability to group some rows by specific values with simply dragging and dropping columns into uh, this section. You can make different combination of columns. The result will be different then. Here I group by assignee and then the status is inside. By the way, your customer might want to have a report for the work being done. You can do this with exporting data to files like Excel, CSV, even PDF. It might be used like a snapshot, then the file could be imported back again. Also, the history of all the changes can be observed in the separate tab on the same issue you. You can see what, by who, and when was added, updated, or removed, anything. As I said before, there might be a list of tasks that are typical and you execute them every time. So, not to copy them again and again, you can pre-populate the grid with default values. It also can be used like a template or form. You can 
put it into a service desk and the user will have to fill out the rest. But this is actually a simple use case. A table grid can do much more. For instance, you can set up your grid to add data there dynamically and automatically taken from issue fields, uh, like selected values from some custom field or the name of the current assignee. Look at this example. It's a grid configured to describe the ordering process. In the grid, we store records for every purchase that customer wants to make. But we have some metadata in custom fields like company name, size, license type. We still need to have some of this information like a uh, company name in the grid, but we don't want to copy it every time. We might want to have the current assignee on the issue added to sold by column. I need to select a license to maybe add some discount and my price will be calculated automatically in the formula. So let's take a look. Here's the company name Idalco and I also have the company column with Idalco value there and sold by and John is the current assignee. So I'm adding new record here and I'm also select the license. Then I select some discount and the price will be calculated automatically. I select a different product and no discount this time. And I also have the price and the total in the footer. But the most interesting part here is the licensing column. Uh, the products and their prices coming from the local database uh, by using SQL query and filter it by the company size and license type. Those are custom fields outside the grid. Let's dig into configuration for a bit. This is the company column and I have this placeholder in the column's default value pointing on the custom field by its ID. Uh, the same with the sold by column. I'm only taking issue assignee here. And the price column, which is formula type. It's written with the JavaScript and actually makes it very flexible. Uh, we also have aggregations in the footer to sum the total price. Besides sum, you have min, max, count operations and JavaScript formula too for advanced cases. And now the licenses column uh, with SQL query. You can see placeholders that pointing on the custom fields are used in SQL query workloads. And those placeholders might not only be related to issue fields. You can use a reference to another column in the grid. It will take a value from columns cell into the same row. It will be a sort of cascading list then. Like in this example, here is the grid where you first select a product type and the company and then based on these selections you have corresponding options in the model drop-down list. It helps so much when you have a lot of data in your database. It also keeps you out of populating mistakes during working with the grid. But that's not all. We also have REST and Java API for automations and customizations, service desk support. So you can put the stable grid field on your customer channel. Uh, full JQL support so you can search issues by the value of the grid. You can import data from files like CSV or Excel. You can have driving tables. It's a separate storage outside of the issue. And we also provide data mirror. It's about copying information from your grid to some external database or any kind of source. And a lot more. We're not gonna cover this during this webinar, maybe the next one. Make sure you ask questions in the chat box or you can write us later in the service desk via email or just find me on LinkedIn. Hope you like the information I share. Thanks for watching. As Ihor mentioned, you can ask your questions in the chat box. If you would like to know more about Table Grid Next Generation or you want to have a free trial, you can check it out on the marketplace. A link must already have popped up in the chat box on the right side of your screen. If not, just contact us. We'll happily help you with it. Thank you everyone for having joined us in this webinar. I hope you enjoyed it and would let us know if you have any questions we can help with. Thanks again. Have a nice day.